This program is rated PG. It contains themes and scenes which may not be suitable for very young audiences. Parental guidance is advised. Be advised that the views and opinions of the hosts and guests do not reflect those of the station. You are what you watch. Good evening. This is Gil Santos. I'm pinch hitting for Harry Tambuatco who is running errands tonight for preparation for the last lap of all this uh, election campaign and the election we're facing on May 9. So uh, tonight you're go we're going to have a review of the last uh, month and a foresight, of a, 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 uh, an effort to foresee the future in the next few, uh, few weeks towards the uh, May 9 elections. And for this purpose, we have invited three what, whom we considered experts in their own fields to be able to help us in our effort towards wise voters' education and information. Because this is the time which is so crucial in our history that we must be able to vote wisely, uh, not just on personal and transactional politics, because that's what, what we have since 1946. And this is the time now to start changing. You know, changing culture takes time. It is a generational problem. So for tonight, we have uh, directly on my right is uh, Dr. Guillermo Carpio. He is a millennial. He was born in 1988, and he's going to give us views of the young, how they look at these issues today that we're facing, and how they're going to vote. Hopefully, they'll be able to be informed by his wise counsel and, and uh, some few buzzwords for, <coughs> for, for our young ones. Next to him is uh, Dr. Ed Tayao of uh, USD and is a fellow of the Adenauer uh, Stiftung Foundation. He is an expert on federalism. He is still a fellow of the, the German Foundation and goes to Germany every now and then. On his uh, right is Dr. He doesn't want to be called Dr. But uh, I, I do, I will, and I've known him for some time. Enrico Sampang. Enrico is a lecturer in the Graduate School of the Lyceum, the Claro M. Recto Graduate School, was also uh, president of the Philippine uh, State, State College. College of Aeronautics, and is now a consultant of <coughs> a consultant uh, of management. Now, he is going to he is a, a, an expert on management, critical thinking, and therefore we hope that all this that we are going to do tonight is going to be of help to everybody. Now, let me start uh, questions. How does the young uh, look at the issues right now? You probably have uh, watched last yes. night's television. Yes. Uh, the um, last debate. Okay. Well, actually, uh, nowadays, uh, the youth is becoming more um, relevant in terms of the issues. Uh, we see issues from day to day. We experience them. And basing on the candidates right now, what we're really looking is somebody who could transcend the message to us, who could really get down to our certain issues that we face today. And I believe um, certain candidates have done that for the past. And what is, what is the, the, the primary issue that you're concerned with? Aside from the fact of um, connectivity, that's one of the major issues that we're really after right now. Um, traffic in the metro is also um, those uh, one mm -hmm. of those major mm -hmm. issues that we're trying to fix. Mm -hmm. How about how about mm -hmm. peace and order? 
actually peace and order and also criminality maybe it depends on a particular um, strata of the youth mm -hmm. if the youth is somewhat in upper um, upper level of the society they'd view it as, as a, a major concern but if the youth of uh, are just uh, in the middle class or in the lower class of the mm -hmm. society sometimes it's not that of a priority how much does uh, economy now take part uh, how much uh, portion of your lives now uh, you young ones are taken by the economic issues because mm, okay. i presume we're going to have uh, something like uh, 40 percent of the total registered voters as the virgin voters as we call them you know and uh, how would they how would they uh, be thinking you think uh, in my opinion and also basing on my talks with fellow um, millennials mm -hmm. we're seeing um, the economy now as one of the um, major contributors of our decision making like for example if we are about to work in a company or we are about to um, be hired in a particular uh, institution we would still see first if the, that institution could uh, be um, could suffice our needs or could also be a, a major contributory a contributing factor to our progress as things. Yeah. Uh, by the way, uh, Ed and uh, uh, Ener, um, at any one point in, in the discussion, you can interrupt and ask questions or inject any of your inputs should you want it, you know, because uh, I could be overlooking things uh, because I look at the overall picture now. <coughs> uh, Ed is, an, is uh, the expert, uh, we consider the expert on federalism. And uh, how are you going to how do you look at the issue of federalism in this election? Does it occupy a large uh, portion of the voters' thinking? Well, I'd like to think that one of the reasons why uh, Mayor Duterte has become popular uh, as uh, one of uh, the candidates is precisely because uh, he's uh, the only candidate that's uh, been pushing for uh, this uh, structural change. Well, uh, not much has been discussed uh, so far. Uh, essentially because uh, of uh, all the candidates, I'd like to think that uh, only one uh, is not in favor of opening up the Constitution for amendment or revision, mm -hmm. and I'm referring to Secretary Mar for uh, uh, pretty much uh, obvious reasons. No? Uh, but, uh, you know, uh, apart from just uh, suggesting that we shift from uh, one uh, system to another, we'd like to think uh, uh, it's also equally important, if not probably more important, to think about how to go about uh, doing things. No? Uh, when we talk of federalism, for example, with the, we should also disabuse ourselves of the thought that it automatically would ensure uh, decentralization. Uh, the U.S. experience on federalism uh, should uh, be a ready reference uh, for us. No? Mm -hmm. uh, the U.S. has always been uh, considered as uh, the model of uh, federalism, but since the 1930s, uh, I'd like to think that uh, they have become uh, less uh, federalized in the sense that uh, the federal government has uh, taken over uh, so much of the powers of the state government. And it works only in the United States. <laughs> uh, we can say that it works only in the United States yeah. uh, in, in, in some way, but uh, there are other federal uh, democracies. Of course, uh, Germany is, an, uh, is another, it's Australia, a Canada, one, yeah. and, and so on. No? Canada but is most one. of these yeah. uh, are uh, not presidential democracies. These are yes. parliamentary democracies. Mm -hmm. So to a certain extent, it's important to uh, uh, not only consider uh, the vertical uh, structure, no? but also the horizontal structure, meaning the relationship between the executive, the legislature, and the judiciary. Okay. Uh, would you explain the difference between presidential and parliamentarian, uh, parliamentary federalism? It's good that you uh, ask that, uh, sir, no? because uh, you know, when you say presidential or parliamentary, uh, we should be very careful in classifying uh, uh, systems, no? particularly those uh, who I heard, for example, uh, suggesting that uh, the 1973 uh, constitution or the Marcos uh, mm -hmm. model is a parliamentary system. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, it's parliamentary probably in terms of shape no? or figure, uh, but in actual operation it's not because you don't uh, have a democracy uh, which uh, has a person uh, that uh, actually has all three powers. It executive, <laughs> legislative, and judicial power. No? It, lo it looks like uh, some uh, misunderstanding of the English language. <laughs> uh, that's right. So, in other words, I always uh, try to underscore that even in the class. Now, the 1971 draft mm 
mm. was the one that's uh, consistent with the parliamentary system. I but see, as yeah. we know already, that was uh, overtaken by events and uh, martial law was declared. Mm -hmm. And of course, uh, so much power was given to uh, then President Marcos. So, so essentially, uh, we never had a parliamentary system. We, can, we should probably go back as far as the Malolos Constitution. No? Uh, in, in fact, the presidential system that we have now was essentially uh, thrusted to our throats uh, mm -hmm. by the American occu uh, occupants. No? Uh, obviously, because at that time, uh, most of our uh, leaders were schooled in uh, Europe. And mm -hmm. so the idea of uh, democracy, the idea of governance is essentially parliamentary. That's what they learned. Okay. And the Americans came and the Americans insisted that the concept of democracy is only uh, the American model, which yes. is presidential. Yes. So yeah. in other words, that's where the uh, break from mm -hmm. uh, supposedly more parliamentary thinking uh, happened. No? How, would you, how would you estimate uh, and, 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 and there, you can you can butt in. How would you estimate the uh, amount of time that we will have to spend to to educate our people on the changes, on the, uh, to federalism? Uh, another good question, in the sense that you know we always dismiss the voters as yes. uh, uh, you know uh, unthinking voters. Mm -hmm. But you know if if there's anything that uh, distinguishes this election with the previous elections, no. Uh, part, uh, including uh, also the 1992, mm -hmm. uh, is precisely because of uh, the debates. No? Mm -hmm. uh, the last mm -hmm. time that we had debates was 1992. It was also a closely uh, fought uh, election yeah. uh, compared to the, uh, all the intervening uh, elections. Uh, what happened was uh, the voters decided mainly on how the candidates were packaged. No? Mm -hmm. I mention that because at the end of the day, the voters will respond to the kind of discussion that they see on TV, they hear on the radio, and uh, they, they read on the, uh, on the papers. No? Mm -hmm. So it's not true that the public or the voting uh, public uh, are people who don't necessarily have the capacity to uh, critically think. Mm -hmm. no? mm -hmm. uh, it's a matter of uh, really informing them and engaging them and uh, including them in the discussion. Yeah. Uh, and there, how, how do you look at it? Uh, how long will it take? I think we have to learn along the way because uh -huh. of the, um, term of uh, whoever gets elected as president is only six years. And we have a candidate who is uh, very st staunchly uh, in favor of completing these things in a cycle of uh, six years. Mm -hmm. In fact, uh, he has uh, self-imposed deadlines about mm -hmm. certain matters, you know, like ending the uh, criminality in 2016, which is, mm -hmm. it gives us only about 15 months to, to do things, or rather six months no, and other things so this is really a different election and uh, in that uh, besides corruption criminality has been introduced mm -hmm. discussion on the debate on the economy is, you know, is discussed and uh, we see uh, a real change in the manner we discuss on issues mm -hmm. for example uh, on the West Philippine Sea Mm -hmm. You know, which uh, has never been taken on by, well, we didn't have the exigency of that issue before. But now, uh, I think uh, the people are learning mm -hmm. and learning fast and adjusting to the change. So we have not seen the likes of uh, a candidate who has been catapulted to... Well, one, one, of, one of the things uh, that has happened in the past and uh, I've covered I've covered elections, you know, since 1950. <clears throat> and uh, what seems to be uh, outstanding or stands out as a primary issue is the kind of personal and transactional politics that our candidates do, especially in the uh, in the uh, uh, local government units uh, level. Therefore, <clears throat> there is a need. That this is why I'm saying there's a need to educate now. 70% of our total uh, registered voters are from the rural areas, not from the urban area. And the reach of our printed media is not that much, you know. But the broadcast and the audiovisual reach, plus the current uh, uh, new, uh, new media, is, is really getting into uh, the, the, the homes of people, even during night time. During, uh, so would you think a three-year, a three-year information campaign intensive at that, you know, by the government, because the government has got all the uh, the agencies take care of it, the information agency, the television, and so forth. What's your take? Ed? 
Well, it's a matter of just putting the system in place. Uh, let's just say, for example, if we compare motorists in Manila, mm -hmm. at the moment they get to Subic, immediately they follow traffic rules and regulations. So, it's, uh, to my mind, it's uh, more than just a matter of uh, educating the public. Look at the, uh, the idea of uh, many people as far as martial law is concerned. Mm -hmm. If you uh, ask people about uh, whether uh, there was uh, any improvement at all as a result of uh, the EDSA revolution, they'd say that, uh, not much has actually changed. Yeah. So uh, despite the so-called uh, part of uh, education, you know, learning about uh, what happened in martial law, uh, at the end of the day, people will uh, also reflect on what exactly they feel at any given time. You know? So uh, at the end of the day, if we change the system, I'm, I'd like to think that behavior would uh, also respond to it uh, adequately. We have to, and there are so many scholarly uh, work uh, done in this matter, you have mm -hmm. to distinguish culture from behavior. Mm -hmm. eh? uh, mm -hmm. So from Bronislav right, Malinowski right. to Ivan Pavlov and so on. No? Uh, the moment you change the structure, immediately uh, individuals will behave differently. So it's uh, not just a matter of uh, education. Let's say, for example, political parties. Uh -huh. you will, we will never have real political parties under the existing setup. Uh, because uh -huh. the, the system is focused on the personality. If we change the rules of the game mm -hmm. uh, so that uh, political uh, organizations will be forced to uh, uh, shape up and therefore establish real political parties, They'll object. then the focus <laughs> will be on political yeah. parties. Uh -huh. And the youth, what does it say? What do you say about this? Well, in terms of the information uh, that yes. we, about federalism, I believe uh, in the advent of social media, in the advent of internet, we could research anywhere, anytime, any, mm -hmm. any place. It's really easy for us to read a lot about it. Mm -hmm. But the problem is in the internet, not everything is true. Mm -hmm. Most probably, you, like in Wikipedia, you could actually edit it yourself. Yeah. Yes. Mm -hmm. So um, the importance here is that the youth of today is becoming more smart or we're, we're choosing the leaders that would really do um, changes or, mm -hmm. as I may say, radical changes yeah. nowadays because some of the youth are really frustrated. Well, let me talk about, let, let's talk about uh, the pros and cons of federalism. To be able to explain this, as you said, uh, one candidate is, uh, is going after this because he really believes that it is good for the country. Uh, <clears throat> hey, uh, what's the, uh, the right side? Uh, what's, the, uh, uh, what's the credit? What's good about it? Yeah. Well, uh, again, we... Uh, any country for that matter no, adopts mm -hmm. a system that's uh, appropriate uh, to the context of uh, the country. In fact, uh, whenever we talk about uh, the national language and the people would insist that uh, we speak Filipino, mm -hmm. uh, probably the uh, language Filipino that we know today is uh, no longer the same as uh, the Tagalog before. No? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Because Filipino has uh, become uh, basically a mix of uh, different uh, regional uh, languages that we have. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But the reason why I mentioned that is because, again, if we go back to uh, an analysis of Philippine society, there are 80 ethno-linguistic groups, major mm -hmm. uh, ethno-linguistic groups. This is not counting the, the minor uh, um, tribes oh, yes. and the indigenous peoples that okay. you find in the countryside. Having said that, it's important to, uh, and also we're an archipelagic country. No? Uh, in other words, uh, these are essential features of uh, uh, allowing some form of uh, self-determination. Uh -huh. Now, when we go to self-determination, that's when you have to qualify the concept of sovereignty. Ah, okay. So that's the okay. downside of yes. federalism. Yes. So yes. we'd like to enjoy uh, the advantages of self-determination so that uh, a, subsid a subsidiary f uh, mechanism is put in place, meaning that people who actually know exactly what's happening on the ground make the, re the decisions for themselves and not people at the center who barely know anything uh, about what's happening okay. at the local okay. level. But we don't yeah. want to mix it up with the shared sovereignty that would uh, uh, basically uh, only add confusion. Okay, one, just one last uh, item before we take a break. <clears throat> um, in terms of the economy, why is that better for, for the country? Uh, well, the, in, in theory, of course, when we federalize or uh, essentially uh, these are also features of uh, autonomy or decentralization is that the intent really is to allow, uh, you know, uh, better opportunities at the local level and therefore uh, result to local economic uh, uh, development. Mm -hmm. When there is uh, enough uh, local uh, economic activity, in theory, uh, that would also serve, uh, that will also uh, solve the problem of in-migration. No? Mm. So you lessen uh, people uh, wanting to get to the center in Metro Manila and uh, also uh, siphon so many public resources in the process. Okay, okay. Uh, let's take a break. Uh, don't go away, we'll be back in a few minutes. <clears throat>
Okay.